Hi church, good morning. I am Mrs. Gardner and this is Nathaniel. Nathaniel. And we are coming at you from our living room. As you know, love you buddy. As you know, we have not been able to be at church lately because of what's going on with the coronavirus. So we have been at home. We have missed you guys though. So I hope you have been enjoying your time with your families. I hope you guys have been getting lots of time to play and spend time together and time to spend with God too. I hope you guys have been reading your Bibles, having your families read to you. Uh, usually for children's church, we always start out with exciting events and we always talk about what exciting happened during your week or what will be happening next week. Since I can't hear you guys, we're going to share what's been going on with us, but I would love if you have videos, pictures, stuff that you would like to share. I would love for your parents to text me and if I have your permission, I can even send out those videos and those pictures to our other children's church family so you guys can see what's going on on in each other's lives. I would love that. So if you have anything, send it along. Nathaniel, what's been going on with us? What have we been keeping busy with? What have the, you and Theo been doing? The coronavirus. The coronavirus. We've been home because of the coronavirus. What have you guys been doing for fun though? Watching movies. They have been watching a lot of movies. Nathaniel does not usually get a lot of TV, so he has been loving that. What else have we been doing? Uh, have you guys been playing a lot? Yes! Yes. Really not. Have you gone for lots of walks? Yes! Played outside with yes! sidewalk chalk. Has it been good or bad? Very good! Very good. So I hope you guys are feeling the same, that even though um, life has been looking a little different for you guys, especially those of you that are used to being in school, um, I know it's a big change, but I hope it's been something that has been a good thing and that has been a positive. And I know there's some of us, um, some kids and adults that have been kind of scared right now. I hope you guys can remember during this time that God is in control and is taking care of you. And that when you're scared, talk to God about it. Pray, let him know what's going on. And God can really help you with that. We're posting stuff on YouTube that is children's messages throughout the weeks. We also have some stuff for your parents. So I hope you guys check that out. Stay in touch with us. Let us know what's going on and how we can be praying for you guys. I am going to be reaching out individually to each of your parents. So if there is stuff that you want to tell me, if there's stuff that um, you want me to be praying for you for, or stuff that you're just excited about, Tell your parents and they can tell me. I would love to keep in touch with you guys and hear what's going on. Um, something we have coming up in the next week, we are going to be blessing some of our shut-ins, the people that are older and aren't able to get out right now, that they're not even able to go outside and take walks, that they have to stay fully in their house. Um, we are going to be blessing them with cards. So if you with your families this week want to make and decorate cards, if you want to put lots of flowers on on it and maybe a cross and write a really encouraging message if you want to be praying for these older adults we would love for you to do that we're gonna have a box at church outside in the drive-thru that you can drop them off and then we will take them and mail them to these shut-ins so it would be an awesome uh, kind of service project mission project for you guys to do this week with your families would love for you to do that so have we been learning about stories from the Old or the New Testament oh the Old Testament. So that's the first part of the Bible. And what have been the stories we've been talking about? Um, the Israelites had not really listened to God for a while. Yes. They had been worshiping other gods. They had been doing stuff that God didn't want them to. So what happened to the Israelites? Yeah. Boys and girls, do you know? What happened to the Israelites? They were taken away as prisoners. They were taken into, there's a big fancy word for it, do you remember? Exile! Good job! The Israelites were taken into exile. They were taken into Babylon. And remember, if you were in children's church, we actually went into exile. We did what it was like to go on that long journey. We went on that long walk all through the church. And we talked about how sad it would be to leave your homes, to leave every single thing you know, and just to live a different life, especially living a life where you didn't have freedom and as a prisoner. Um, 
our lives are looking pretty different right now. We're not in exile, but in some ways it might feel similar to that. So, do you remember how long the Israelites stayed in exile? I don't know. Was it one year? Seventy. <gasps> how many? Seventy. Seventy years. Is that a long time or a short time? Really long time. Has mommy been alive 70 years? No. Mommy is only 34 years old. So there was people that were, there was kids that were born in exile that didn't know anything else. There were people that died in exile. It was a really, really long time. So we talked about stories of what happened in exile. We talked about um, Daniel and the lion's den. We talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we talked about how God was faithful to the Israelites while they were there. Last week, you guys talked, or two weeks ago, with Mrs. Fry. I was actually homesick, so I'm sorry I missed you guys. Um, you talked about as the Israelites were coming out of exile, that they were finally able to return back to Israel, to Jerusalem, and how they started rebuilding something that was really, really important that helped to protect the city. What was really important that was going around the whole city that helped to protect them? Uh, the... The, the walls. The walls. So God used Nehemiah to help gather the people together and they were finally able to rebuild the walls. It took them a while at first, but then when they finally um, were trusting God and working under Nehemiah, it only took them 53 days to rebuild the walls. Is that long time or little time? Little, little time, yeah. Because it had taken them years and years before that to try to do it, and they kind of kept giving up. But finally, they trusted God, and they were able to do it in record-breaking time, only 53 days. So today, we're going to kind of pick up on that story. That um, The rebuilding of the walls is the first half of the book of Nehemiah. We're going to now be on the second half of Nehemiah, and we're going to be talking about what happened after the walls were rebuilt. There was a priest at the time by the name of Ezra. Can you guys say Ezra? Ezra. 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 And what Ezra did was he found the book of the law. He had the book of the law. What is the book of the law? What was it basically? The Ten Commandments. It included the Ten Commandments, but it was basically the Bible at that time. So I'm going to grab a Bible. Did there? <laughs> you want your record Bible? Nathaniel's been listening to this. It's a Bible on record where he gets to listen and turn the pages along with it. So we're going really old school here. Um, this is, not right now, this is actually my Bible. Did Bibles back then look like this? No. No. Oftentimes. They were scrolls. They were scrolls. Yeah. What's a scroll? No idea. No idea. It, it's, it's just paper that you roll up. It's paper trying to think if there's anything I have here. This is not a scroll. This is my son's hockey mat, my other son's. A scroll was basically a piece of paper that they would have, a piece of parchment. It was different than the kind of paper we have now. And it would be able to be rolled up like this. And what it was is they would unroll the scroll and on the inside would be written all of their laws or all of the things about God. So what happened was this one day after the walls were rebuilt, Ezra called all of the people in to the city. They were going to basically have back then, it almost would have been a big church service, a big gathering. And from really, really early in the morning, so probably maybe even before some of you wake up, Nathaniel's been getting up around 10 a.m., which is really late. But from when the sun was coming up in the sky till it talks about how it was midday, so hours and hours and hours, they would sit, or stood actually, as Ezra read from the book of the law. They were hearing about what God had done for the Israelites and also what he commanded them to do, what his rules were for the Israelites. And they realized as... Ezra was reading from this book of the law that they had been breaking many of God's laws, that they weren't following him. How do you think the Israelites felt knowing that they weren't following God? Do you think it made them happy or sad? Sad. It made them really sad. The Bible talks about how the Israelites actually started weeping. 
They were so sad how they had disobeyed God. Do you think we still disobey God? Do you think we can mess up? We do. We mess up every single day still. And we should be sad when we mess up too. It still makes God sad. Does it make God sad when we mess up? Yeah, it does. And we're supposed to tell God we're sorry. Can God forgive us when we mess up though? Nathaniel, can God forgive us when we mess up? Yeah. How do we know that? What did God do so that he could forgive us now? Nathaniel, who did he send? Jesus. Jesus, to do what? To save the disciples. To save us from our what? Sins. From our sins, from the wrong things we've done. He died on the cross for our sins. He took our punishment, which was supposed to be death. That was the price for our sins. But he took that upon him. So back then, Jesus had not come yet. He had not died on the cross yet. But they were doing sacrifices. They would sacrifice animals in payment for sins. So that was what they would do instead. And so the Israelites were telling God how sorry they were. They were crying out to him. And it wasn't just adults. There was kids there too. And so they actually said after the people were crying out to God that this was a time where they were still supposed to rejoice in God. And they talked about how Nehemiah said that they were going to have a feast. So they were going to rejoice. Now we still are supposed to repent when we mess up. We're supposed to tell God we're sorry. God still wants us to repent now. This is a time where we can spend time telling God sorry for stuff we've done wrong, but we're also supposed to rejoice in him. We're supposed to trust in him and know that he is a God that is good and forgives us. So we're gonna spend a few minutes watching our video. So we're gonna play that for you guys and then just talk about it for a few seconds and then we will pray. So watch along with us. Hello everyone, I'm Megan and I'm Jessie. Megan, watch this. The, the joy of the l Lord is your stir strength. Strength, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Jessie, that's part of a verse from our Bible story today. Did you read that? Yep. I've been working on my reading. Oh, Jesse, that's amazing. I'm so proud of you. And there's no better book to practice reading than the Bible. Ah, thanks, Megan. You're making me blush. <laughs> you will be just like Ezra before you know it. Ezra? Who is that? Ezra is the priest in today's Bible story. He stood on a tall platform and read God's word to the people. Oh, cool. Listen to the story. The walls around Jerusalem were finally finished. The people had worked very hard and God had helped them. One morning, the people got together. Men, women, and children came to hear Ezra, the priest, read God's word. The sun was just coming up when Ezra carried out God's word so he could read it. God's words were written on a scroll. Ezra stood on a tall platform and opened the scroll. Everyone could see it. Ezra began to read God's word aloud. The people in the crowd listened carefully. Everyone stood up. Ezra praised God and the people lifted up their hands. Amen, amen, the people said. Then they bowed down with their faces close to the ground. All the people worshiped God together. Some of the leaders there explained God's words to the people. They helped the people understand what Ezra read. When the people understood God's word, they were sad. The words from God were about how to live, and the people had not been living the way God wanted them to live. They were sorry for disobeying God. Ezra, his helpers, and Nehemiah, the governor, said, This day is special. Do not be sad. Do not cry. This was a happy day. Ezra said, Go home and get ready to have a feast. Eat good food and drink good drinks. 
Share what you make with people who don't have any food or drinks. Then Ezra said again, Today is a special day. Be happy. God makes us strong. So the people did what Ezra told them to do. Nehemiah led the people to turn back to God. They promised to worship only God and obey Him. The Bible teaches us about God and Jesus. It helps us know the right things to do. We do wrong things a lot, but God can change our hearts and help us say no to sin. Jesus died to rescue us from sin. All right, so what did you boys and girls think of that? Did you like the video? Nathaniel, what did you think? was awesome. It was awesome. All right, who was the priest that read out of the book of the law? I don't know. I don't remember. Do you boys and girls remember? Ez... Ezra. Ezra. Now, did the people understand it right away? No. No? How did they finally understand it? Because when, when the other helpers... When the other helpers taught them about it. Yeah. Yeah. Do we sometimes need people to help us understand God's Word? No. Do I usually teach you guys to help you understand God's Word? Yeah. Same kind of thing. So the teachers, just like your children's church teacher or your Sunday school teachers, were helping them understand it. And when they finally understood God's Word, what did they realize? They realized that they didn't obey. And so what did they do? Bow down and cry. Yeah, they cried. They were sad. They bowed down. Yeah. Did Ezra tell them they should stay sad, or did Nehemiah tell them to stay sad? No. No. No one. No. That they were supposed to. It was a special day, and what were they going to do? Oh, have a feast. Have a feast. How about if people didn't have food? What were they going to do? Share. Share. They were going to give them food. Are we able to have a big gathering where we can have a feast right now? No, not right now. But maybe in a few weeks or a few months, our church family can get together and maybe we can have a big feast and celebrate what God is doing and what he has done. We need to trust during this time that God is still here. Um, some activities if you guys want to do them at home with your families. Uh, if you want to take a paper plate and color on it. And if you were going to have a feast, what would you want to be eating at your feast? So make that decorate on a paper plate. And if you even want to decorate two, you can do one paper plate with what you would eat and maybe one paper plate with what you would share with others. So if we were having a big feast at the church, what would you want to be there? Another thing you can do, when did they start hearing God's word? Was it late at night or early in the morning? Oh. Early in the morning. If you guys have any coffee filters, so white coffee filters, what you can do is take some orange and some yellow markers and color it in to make it look like a sun and then put a towel down and take a water bottle and squirt um, the sun and make it kind of those colors come together. It'll look really pretty and you can hang it up to remind you, even for you guys, that early in the morning it's good to be listening and reading God's word and to be following it like the people of Israel. I'm going to send some links out in an email to your families. I think it would be wonderful during this time if you have some extra time to actually learn God's law, to learn the Ten Commandments. There's a link I used to use to teach the kids called Kids Learn the Ten Commandments. Uh, Nathaniel actually learned them when he was probably three years old, but there's some cool rhyming words and stuff that makes it really easy. Nathaniel, do you remember it at all? One is... Son, God's only son, you shall have no other gods before me. Two, two is shoe, shoe by grave, you shall not make any graven images, and so on and so forth. So you can learn all 10 um, and you will learn them in order and you will get to the point where somebody could ask you, 
what is the sixth commandment? And you will be able to say, those of you that might already know this, do not kill. Somebody could say, what is the third commandment? And you'll be able to think through and say, do not use the Lord's name in vain. Somebody could say, Nathaniel, choose a number between one and 10. 10. 10. The 10th commandment is thou shall not covet. So you're going to learn it so that you'll be able to do this because it's important to have God's law in our hearts. Well, so send that link. It's fun to listen to. And the more you hear it, the easier it is to learn it. I'll also be sending out the coloring pages for you guys and also some worship songs if you want to sing some worship because that was one of the things God's people were doing as well. So it's important to be in God's word, to be worshiping him, and to really be focusing on him during this, on him during this time. Please close your eyes and bow your heads. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for giving us this time to learn about you, even though it was in a different way than we're used to, at a different place. Um, Lord, I pray that you would still connect us together and let us feel your presence. Lord, I pray that you would help us to follow your laws. Give us, change our hearts that even when we want to disobey you, you help us to follow your laws. Help us to know what your law says. Help us to know what the word, um, what your Bible says. Help us to be in your word during this time. And please forgive us for the ways that we've gone against you, that we've broken your laws and help us to start following you again. Lord, we love you. Please help us to trust in you this during this time and please help us to draw closer to you. And God, I do pray that in a few weeks or months that we'll be able to gather again, that we'll be able to have a huge <coughs> feast together, a huge celebration <laughs> and truly talk about the ways that you have worked in our lives. We love you, Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we'll hopefully be talking to you again soon. Have a wonderful week and be checking us out on YouTube and following along. All right, talk to you later. Bye, guys. Hi, boys and girls. Brief correction. I was looking through after I was done with the lesson and I said it took 53 days for Nehemiah and the Israelites to rebuild the wall. I was wrong. It only took them 50 days two days. So even one day less, that's how fast they were able to do it once they started trusting in God. So 52 days to rebuild the wall. All right. Thanks guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.